Hey, you're about to hear an interview I did with WNBA player Jordan Canada. One way I know Jordan is because we work together on this amazing new series for Jordan Brand called Take It From L.A., where we celebrate the L.A. basketball culture and the whole basketball community. Since her episode drops tomorrow, January 26th, this felt like a perfect time to share this interview. Enjoy. Welcome to Spinsters, a podcast where we love Vanity Kane. I am Jordan Canada. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Well, what connects us is besides both being named Jordan. Actually, before we even get started, what is life like? as an I in Jordan, because I am, I spell my name J-O-R-D-A-N, but I've always wondered what life is like as an I in. So please tell us. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It, um, <laughs> you know, I get a lot of people that say they like the way they, that my name is spelled. Some people mm-hmm. ask me why my name is spelled with an I in and not an A-N. Mm-hmm. So I can thank my, thank my dad for that. Um, he wanted to name me I in instead of A-N because he thought you know, it just was different. It was a little bit more unique. Yeah. Um, I so, that. I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Nothing really too unique of a story um, mm-hmm. of why my name is with the I in, but it's pretty cool. I just get a lot of compliments about my name. Do I feel like we mutually hate the Y in Jordans though. I feel like that's a different, <laughs> I, that's something different. That's a different, I have, like, I don't know if I know anybody <laughs> with a Y in. I do know somebody with an E in, and that's oh. that's different. Um, yeah, I don't think I like them. So either. yeah, I, <laughs> I think the <laughs> I in and the A in is the best way to go. Yeah. Now the Y in, I haven't met anybody with the Y in, but I mean it's it's okay. In fifth grade, <laughs> I tried it out for a week. I was like, you know, I'm just gonna change it. I'm gonna go Y in. I want I'm going to start writing it on my homework just to see how it feels. And it was different. It wasn't me. It was different. It, it was wasn't you. Yeah, it, it wasn't the same vibes as the A.N. So, yeah, I think it's it's I.N. and A.N. against A-N, Y.N. Yeah. That it's yeah. there's a, we don't make agree. the rules. I'm sorry. That's I, just I how would it agree is. with that. <laughs> <laughs> but how else we're connected is through Jordan Brand and from the new series, Take It From. I had the wonderful opportunity to host it and kind of shine a light on women's basketball through it. And through the first season, we talked about L.A. And the whole show is wrapped around basketball culture in different cities and the movers and shakers and community heroes in that city. So we talk about L.A., your hometown. How would you describe the basketball culture of L.A.? Man, there's so many things that I could talk about with with basketball culture in LA. We're just we're just a different breed, to be honest. I mean, mm-hmm. we have so many legends that have come out of LA or even play for LA. Like even Kobe, Kobe's not from LA, but we consider him an LA legend just because he played, you know, for the Lakers his whole career. You got Russell Westbrook, you got Lisa Leslie, you got DeMar DeRozan. You got, I like to think myself as an mm-hmm. LA legend. I was about to say, um, uh, include <laughs> yourself in there. <laughs> um, we got so, we got so many professional athletes, you know, coming out of LA. We, we're just built different. Our demeanor, the way we carry ourselves, um, how we play the game of basketball. We just have this sort of like attitude about us, you know, that, you know, we don't take any mess. And so that's what I love about the basketball LA culture. And you can even see it now with, kids um growing up uh, coming out of LA or even yeah. wanting to you know um move to LA to play to certain teams like you got Juju Watkins who you know is one of the best right now coming up mm-hmm. in LA and you can just see the the basketball culture like still continuing to grow out of LA so it's just amazing to see but yeah we just got this demeanor about us that you know we don't take no mess so I, I love that about us. I love that, too. That was something that we talked about probably throughout the whole show of one. I think L.A. basketball players are probably the most stylish. Like you have to come on the court styling. That. That's yep. that is I a must. That. <laughs> I yeah. had to go buy new clothes for my open gyms. I was like, I'm not 
up to par in this LA that's, basketball. Yeah, season. that's actually that's pretty accurate because even with myself, I'm like, dang, how am I gonna wear my gear on court? Like when I was younger, I didn't really care. I mean, I was a little kid, so just as long as I get to play. But as yeah. I was growing up, I'm like, no, I actually like want to make a statement on the court. I want to wear arm sleeve. I want to wear leg sleeves. I want to do something different. And you can see that with within every, you know, basketball player that's from L.A. So I like that about us, too, that we're we're stylish on the court. And I like to think we're stylish off the court, too. We have yes. this little swag about us, L.A. swag. So we we're just well-rounded. Yes, <laughs> I would agree. I would agree. And you talked about some of the the pro players and the big names that have come out of L.A. But as you were growing up and, and making your way in the basketball scene, who were some of those people that you looked up to in the community or maybe they were some of those pro players? Yeah, I mean, Lisa Leslie was one of them. I mean, especially me being a women's basketball player growing up. I used to go to the Sparks games all the time and just to hear about her, her legacy, um, you know, growing up in high school and um, actually USC, too. We have a lot of, you know, legends coming out of U- uh, USC as mm-hmm. well. Um Cynthia Cooper, I don't even know if she's from L.A. or not, but just the the fact that she played in L.A. And then you have uh, the McGee sisters. Mm. Um, I am forgetting. Um, wow. Cheryl Miller. I'm blanking on her. Yes, Cheryl Miller. Yep. Sorry. Cheryl Miller. Um, so those are like some of the women that, you know, I saw or at least highlights of them. You know, I was too young when they were when they were playing, but just highlights mm-hmm. of them at USC. And then, like I said, Lisa Leslie growing up, I get to go to the games and watch her play. Like it was just, um, so, so inspiring for me, um, to want to continue and be that person that when, uh, when I grow up, kids look up to me and be like, Hey, like Jordan's from LA and she represents LA and look at her now. So those were some of the athletes that, you know, I kind of looked up to. I love that you brought that up too, because I've, I've lived in LA for about four years now, so I can't say that I'm a native, Mm -hmm. but just from being we can, here. We can still claim you. Thank you. Because I really want you. to. I really want to. <laughs> so thank you for that invitation. I'm so excited. Um, but the just from playing here as a you know young woman, as a young adult, the mm-hmm. L.A. basketball scene for women is different. Like I feel like from anywhere in the country, it is so they embrace women basketball. They lift up women basketball players. It doesn't really feel like there's this gender divide or anything like that so what was that like growing up as a girl playing basketball and being able to see like oh I'm I feel welcomed here in the, in this gym or in this city yeah so for me um it was actually pretty cool because I used to play at this park uh, called Rancho it was like right by Dorsey High School Mm. And so we used to play in the boys league all the time. So as a, as a young girl, you know, we're the only girl team playing in this boys league. And, you know, we used to get a lot of crap and uh, uh, from the, from the younger boys. Cause you know, they're like, Oh, you're a girl, you can't play all this other stuff. And then when we would play them, we would blow them out. And then after <laughs> that, we would get the respect of the young dudes. And even like, you know, the older guys that would come and watch, you know, us play. And so mm. After that, we just got a lot of respect, you know, from younger boys, from older guys. And then from there on out, like they were like, yeah, they belong here, you know. And that was pretty cool to see at a young age because, you know, I'm not sure anywhere else that you would get that type of respect. But, you know, as long as you can hoop and, you know, you you can you can get that respect anywhere in L.A. So uh, that's pretty cool to see uh, as an L.A. culture in general, just how the gender, it doesn't matter if you're, if you're a man or a woman, if you Mm -hmm. can hoop, you belong. Hoop is hoop. That's what I always say. Right. Like why, why do we have to separate it? Because like you said, if it's a little girl's team or a little boy's team, the scoreboard is going to be the final (laughs) teller. Exactly. (laughs) It doesn't matter anything else. Doesn't matter. (laughs) And you were saying, you know, you're listing all those USC players, but you decided to go to UCLA and stay in LA. Was that like a dream come true? Did you grow up watching UCLA games? Was that your first choice? Actually, no. So USC was my my school. I loved USC is. growing up. I <laughs> wanted to go to USC. I used to go to football games. I was a USC advocate. I didn't really care for UCLA. Um, and it wasn't until I want to say my sophomore year in high school 
one of my best friends, Rasay Caldwell, she had committed to UCLA. And so I was like, at that time, I was like, well, I'm definitely not going to UCLA because she was a point <laughs> guard too. And I'm like, well, I'm definitely not going there. And they weren't even on my list, to be honest with you. Like I didn't Dang. even have UCLA on my list of schools that I wanted to go to. It was more so like Tennessee, it was Stanford, USC, Notre Dame, mm-hmm. like, you know, all the, you know, big time schools. And uh, she brought it to my attention. She was like, hey, like, what if we played together in college? And I'm like, uh, I don't know if that would really work out. Yeah. You know, we're both point guards and I don't want to, you know, be trying to play against you for a starting position or just fighting for minutes anyway. And so she was like, no, like I can play the two. You know, it doesn't matter to me. Like you can play the one. So I'm like, all right. So I gave UCLA a chance and, you know, the coaches were calling me constantly, you know, checking on me. And, mm-hmm. you know, I kind of like that because compared to the other schools, I wouldn't say that they weren't checking on me, but, you know, they were more so focused on things of outside of basketball. Like what was, what was I interested in outside of basketball? What are some, you know, some of my values and, and things that I like to do off the court. Yeah. And so that's what really brought to my attention, like, Hey, like they really do care about me as a person and not just a basketball player. And so when I went on campus, um, I was like, yo, this is, this is amazing. Like, I can't believe I didn't want to go here or Mm -hmm. considering going here. And so, um, what really made me commit was after my junior year, we had lost in state, um, state championship. And mm-hmm. I was like, so bummed out. And this was during the time of March Madness. So, you know, teams are in college, they're preparing for March Madness. They're not really checking in on me. They're focused yeah. on, you know, their team. And so literally like a couple hours after the game, like the head coach had, you know, DM me and said, Hey, I'm sorry for you, you know, sorry about the, the game. Mm. You know, we, we, I hope you're okay. And, you know, we just wish you the best and, you know, looking forward to seeing you um, in club. And so at that point I was like, no other team did that. No other team checked on me. No other team asked Ooh, how I was doing. That's so, so I was cool. like, you know what? I think I was like, I think I know what school I want to go to. So the next day I'm sitting in my room, depressed, sad, mm. eating cookies, <laughs> like watching TV. Oh, no. I was so mad. I was like, man, we should have <laughs> won the game. And then I texted my best friend. I was like, I think I'm going to commit today. And she was like, what? Are you serious? I'm like, yeah, I think I'm going to commit. So I, wow. I got out of my room. I went to my mom. I said, hey, mom, I said, I think I'm going to commit to UCLA. And this came out of nowhere to her because she was she didn't even know how much I really liked UCLA. Mm -hmm. So I came to her. I was like, hey, I I think I'm going to commit to UCLA today. And she was like, are you serious? I said, yeah, like, (laughs) I I think I'm ready to commit. And she said, are you sure? She's like, Jordan, this is a big decision. I was like, mom, I know for sure I want to commit to UCLA. She's like, "Okay, wait till your dad gets home. My dad came home a couple hours later. I told him, I called the coach. They were actually like getting ready to go into film, I think, I believe. And I said, hey, like, I just want to let you guys know that I'm committing to you guys. And wow, you know, I'm really excited. And, you know, they were excited too. And then from there on out, it was just like the rest is history. But that's kind of like the story of how it happened. Like UCLA wasn't even on my list. And then they wind up being, you know, the school of choice. So you know, I'm glad that if it wasn't for my best friend, I don't even think that I would have gone to UCLA or even thought about going to UCLA. So it's amazing how things work out. That is an incredible yeah. story, especially just the the, um, you know, as a recruit, the things that you're paying attention to is mm-hmm. the intentionality of coaches that care about right. you as a person, because that is where you were going to you know, spend four years right giving your all. So you want to make sure you're giving it to a coach and an organization that cares. So that right. is a great story. And I'm sure like the rest of us, like I thought I was going to USC because of love and basketball. That was what it was all yes. about. I was like, oh, I'm going to be Monica Wright. This is yes, yes, happen. yes, <laughs> so, absolutely. Which fun fact about that, I, I interviewed the director, Gina Prince, by the mm-hmm. way. And she said it was going to be filmed at UCLA, but they said no. Like Monica was going to be a UCLA basketball wow. player. Everything was going to be UCLA because the director went to UCLA. They mm-hmm. said no to filming there. So that's why she went to USC. So, wow. In Love and Basketball 2, you are cast. I could have been, Mo- I, I been Monica, uh, the UCLA version of Monica Wright. You could have been. If it would have happened been. that way. Could have been. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> wow, that's that is such a cool story. And I'm sure it was also great to have your family there close and your community that you have played basketball for, played basketball with, be able to support you through that time as well. Yeah, that was also one of the reasons why I also decided to go to UCLA too, yeah. was just to have that, you know, support system. Um, you know, they say it takes a village. So mm-hmm. For everyone that has supported me throughout my years of club ball and just growing up and playing the game, all the people that I've met, just the fans and supporters, for me to stay home and just represent L.A. and where I come from and not feeling like I needed to go somewhere else to get that notoriety, like I can do it here in L.A., um, that was something that was really important to me, too, because, you know, I want to I want I want my family and my friends to be able to see me play day in and day out. Like, I don't want them to have to fly and have to go across the country to see me play just for like one or two games and then have to fly back. Like I want them to be able to, you know, come see me whenever. And for me to also like, if I need to decompress or if I feel like I need Mm -hmm. to be around my friends, like I have that opportunity instead of just calling them up and being on FaceTime all the time. Sometimes you kind of need that in-person interaction. And so that was one of the other reasons why I decided to go to UCLA too. And also the education, like UCLA was, you know, yeah. one of the top schools in the, in the country. And so for me to go there and have an education from UCLA and a degree, like I knew that um, whatever I decide to do um, off the court, you know, that, that degree can take me far, that education can take me far. So those are some of the reasons also why I decided to commit to UCLA as well. Yeah. Yeah. And you were saying, you know, it it takes a village. And I think L.A. just feels like one big village for yes. <laughs> for basketball. It's everybody knows somebody in the yeah, basketball it's world. It's big and small. <laughs> it, it's a it's L.A. is big, but it's small at the same time, especially in the basketball world. It's super small. It's yeah. spe- and I feel like, you know, just the Drew League, too. We have to talk about the Drew just being mm-hmm. an amazing outlet for players and for that community and the women's drew we in the first episode of take it from la we get to talk to tanisha ware who's the commissioner of the women's drew and i want to pick your brain just how important that is to have as an outlet for women so that when little jordans come and watch both i ends and a and jordans come and watch the women's drew they're able to say like Oh, I can play basketball at a competitive level, a competitive level in my city, in front of my family, in front of my friends. Like how important is just the women's Drew entity in in itself? Uh, It's super important. I actually know somebody who's the coach of a team, um, Earl Ramsey. Uh, Mm. He's the coach of, yeah, of Gage. And I, so Mm. I think that's super important because, you know, the WNBA is so small, you know, and. It's not a lot of opportunities for, you know, athletes who can play in the league, but it's just, you know, such a small league that there's not a lot of, you know, opportunities. So the fact that, you know, L.A. has another place where you can come and you can play on a a competitive level, I think that's super important. And, you know, uh, I haven't been to a Women's Drew League game yet. Because, you know, I'm either overseas or it's just really hard. I have have not been to one yet. I have not been to one yet. I've been dying to go, but like, you know, I've been over either I'm overseas or, you know, just haven't had the chance to. So that's kind of like the the bad part about it. But I know friends who play in the league. I know Mm -hmm. how competitive it is. And so just to see, I know there's some former WNBA players or WNBA players that do play in the league. Yep. And I think that's really cool too, just to, you know, stay active. Um, if you're not playing like games or overseas and stuff, you can still stay active in this league because it's so competitive. And I've heard how competitive it is. Mm-hmm. So I think it's super important for, you know, LA culture as well. Like that's something that you don't see in any other state. And for it to be such a big thing in LA, I think it's super cool for men and for women too. First of all, we are going to go to a women's Julie game together. <laughs> we well, have to, if I'm you're in town, mission, <laughs> I'm going to make it my mission to go to a women's Julie game for sure. It is like nothing else because it's exactly like you're saying, like it's packed. It's standing room only because mm-hmm. you get to be so close to these WNBA players. You get to be so close to right. these L.A. icons that are playing. Um Shout out to Redemption. They just won the championship. Essence Carson was on that team. 
Yeah, um, I heard they beat they beat they beat Earl's team. Yeah, they did. Yeah. I, I didn't want to break it to you, but yeah, yeah, yeah they did. They did beat Gage. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but it's so competitive. It's so high in, right. in intensity and all of that. So one, we have to go to a game. But yes. um, one player like Ty Young, who has played in that mm-hmm. league, and then now we see the athletes unlimited league also growing mm-hmm. and starting. So do you feel like we're trending in the right direction? Like there's multiple outlets now to be able to play home side. And these are women only leagues. They're going to be on TV. They're going to be talked about. Like, do you feel like we're trending in the right direction? I know we still have a long way to go. At, but. We have a long way to go, but I absolutely think we're trending in the right direction. I think, yeah. like I said, we're having more avenues of, you know, and opportunities for us to still play. Cause like I said, you know, the NBA, they got the G League, they got the NBA, they got overseas. Mm-hmm. So, you know, all we had was the WNBA. We didn't really and overseas. And you know, a lot of people don't really want to go overseas all the time. So yeah. the fact the fact that we have another opportunity with the Women's Drew League and the Athletes Unlimited to have, you know, um the opportunity and chance to stay at home, stay in the States and still compete at a high level. I think that's amazing. And, you know, like I said, it's going to create more opportunities for us to, you know, want to stay home and, Mm -hmm. you know, just continue to compete at a high level and not have to worry about having to travel all the way across the world just to continue to play. Like, I just think that's super cool um, of the Athletes Unlimited. And like I said, the Drew League as well. So we're trending in the right direction. We have a long way to go, but, you know, we've come very far from where we've been. So. We've come very, very, very far. Very that's, far. And that's something that I, I try to just take home. You have in. to tell yourself that. You have to tell yourself that because when you get fixated on things that are not going well or right. what we're not doing, you have to realize like we've come a long way from, mm-hmm. you know, from the beginning. So I, you can't complain, but obviously you still want to, you know, make progress. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's still cool to see, you know, the the avenues that are being created for us. So mm-hmm. I'm excited for the future. Me too. And that's what I always I I try to make it my mission to change the narrative of the W and women's basketball, because I think every anybody that wants me on their podcast, they're like, how can the W make money? Why can it be? Why is it so bad? Why is this and this? And it's like, actually, what if we flip it? How awesome are these players? Look what they're doing off the court look at how far we've come and that's a better conversation to me because that's more exciting and with you being in the w and you you know you've made it you you made it you went through all those steps and now you're in a league where you know me as a little girl every you as a little girl we're looking up to these players and saying like i can play basketball at a high level Mm -hmm. i can play and do this what i love how has that transition been i know you're about five years in, but I'm sure that that joy and that spark still happens at the start of every season. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's a blessing first and foremost to be a part of the league. Like I said, there's not a lot of opportunities and uh, a lot of teams. So the fact that, you know, I'm one of 144 is just an amazing feeling. Um, It's an honor and a blessing. And, you know, it just kind of takes me back to being a kid, like the first like day of, you know, op- it's like season opener, like just being that little kid in like a candy store. Like, oh, my God, like, <laughs> you know, it's the first it's the first game of the season. Like, I'm super excited, you know, just having that feeling like I had as a kid and, um, you know, getting to have that experience year in and year out. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's pretty cool. And to see how far I've come and what I had to go through to get here and what I still have to do to stay here because it's not a guarantee. Um, You know, it just makes you want to get better. It motivates you. And then when you see other players around the league, how, you know, they're being so successful and their stories and how they, you know, like Shea Petty, like one of them, she was in and out of the league for, for years and being cut and having to play overseas and then seeing her story and, and coming back and what she did in the bubble, like, that's really inspiring to see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it, you know, it motivates me to want to keep getting better, wanting to grow my game. Um, So just stories like that. And like I said, like being, just being in the league and being a part of the 144 is, you know, it's a blessing, you know, it's not guaranteed. And so it just motivates me to keep going. 
That's so cool. I love that. I love Shea Petty's story. That is a yes. perfect picture, perfect example of the W as right. opportunity. And when opportunity meets preparation, then that's what yeah. you you get. I love that. And uh, <laughs> we were talking about too, like your first year, you're a champion. First year <laughs> in the WNBA um, championship. Is that just been the level from here on out? You're like, I don't know what it's like to not win. And you just do a hair it's, flip. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, it's unbelievable. I never would have thought in my rookie year that I was going to win a, a championship. My my main focus was just making sure I knew what I was doing when I was on the court. You know, being a rookie, having to adjust to a new team, new organization. Um, my main job was just making sure I don't mess up. That was, that was when my <laughs> mind coming into, in my rookie year, like making sure I don't mess up, making sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And then just throughout the season, just seeing how much success we were having. I was like, I don't know if this is how like easy it is, or maybe we're just a really good team. I don't know. But You're like, what is everybody that, talking about? This right. Is I was easy. Like, this is the stuff that I was thinking as a rookie. I'm like, I don't know if this is like easy or we're just a really good team. Because, <laughs> you know, in the previous years watching Seattle, you know, they they haven't had, you know, as much success, you mm-hmm. know, as, you know, when I came into the into the league. So for us to just like take off like that, I didn't get I didn't get to experience how hard it was in the beginning. Right. You know, for them and how they were rebuilding. I didn't get to experience that. So I'm coming in and all of a sudden there's this big transition and transformation of us just winning these games, like going on streaks. And <laughs> I'm like, OK, like, like, I, 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 I'm, yeah, right. I was like, I'm not going to complain. Like, hey, I, I love that we're winning. And then to be a part of a team where I actually like contributed, that was also something that I found value in because, you know, when you're a rookie, sometimes you don't really see the court as much or you don't play as much. And for me to come in and, you know, have that, the the few minutes that I had to impact um, was, you know, really important for me and for my confidence, you know, to come in and feel like, yeah, like I'm actually a part of this team. I'm actually contributing Mm-hmm. And then for us to win it all, I was like, I can't believe this is happening. Like, this is so crazy. Um, my family couldn't believe it. All my friends were just so excited. Like, I was having the time of my life, my rookie year, like just experiencing <laughs> that and what it was like. And just the culture in Seattle, like, yeah, it's unbelievable. I've never seen any other WNBA team mm-hmm. like fans the way our fans are like we call them storm crazies for a reason. <laughs> like I'm excited to, I mean, hopefully I'll be able to return to Seattle this season. Um, but yeah, just the support from Seattle is just super, it, it's nothing like I've ever seen before. And so just to have that experience as well, mm-hmm. um, it kind of just like made my rookie year, like something that I'll never forget and I'll always cherish. Um, so those, that's so probably cool. like one of the best career moments of my life is just winning my first ring in my first season with Seattle. You're like one for one. Easy. Right. What? Why did you guys take it so long to get these? <laughs> right. this is easy. Do the first try. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and then you want another one. <laughs> yeah. And now I, I just feel like you're you're like, wait, so your guys season ends <laughs> in August like I don't know what that's like I love that that's just the energy that you come with every season Mm -hmm. your team or you know just you as a player I'm sure it's like championship or nothing because that's that's all we know is that right right yeah and then yeah I I definitely would say that and just also like even the second ring that I won like just Knowing what a championship culture is like now, being mm-hmm. in my rookie year, I know what it's like for a championship culture. And then having that my second year with, you know, the injuries and all that mm-hmm. stuff and people doubting us, like we still got to the playoffs, even with what we had, like we yes. were still a legit team. And then bringing it back into the bubble where we're complete again and still dominating, like is dominating. Just, like it was dominant. dominant. Yeah. Like we just, un- I just understood what it took to be a champion because I experienced it in my rookie year. So I knew what it took. I knew how yeah. hard it was going to be. Um, and then it just made it even more special with all the things that were happening um, around that time in 2020 in the bubble, how hard it was, and just how, mm-hmm. 
you know, everyone, even not even us, but other teams and the organization, just experiencing the ups and downs and the roller coaster of the season and dealing mm-hmm. with COVID um, and all the, you know, the social inequality and the George Floyd and the Breonna Taylor. Like it was so much. It so was much. like so much that was going on in the bubble. And then being there in the bubble for three months, like, for at least for me, like not being able to have like that support system, like my family being able Mm -hmm. to come or my friends being able to come and just literally being in a bubble Mm -hmm. and only having your teammates, like it's a grind and it's, it's hard. And so the fact that we were able to get through that as well and win another championship, like that is something that I also will never forget. Like, it's just unbelievable how we were able to, to fight through that and still come out on top. And so like I've just been really blessed to have to start off my career the way I have to yeah to go two for four. I mean I'm two for four right now, so it's a pretty it's good streak. It's, it's a pretty, pretty good, good streak. streak. Yeah, it's a pretty good. Pretty good streak. So I can I I'm super blessed and you know just you know thank God every day that I'm in the position that I'm in. So and while you're on the court, you're also able to style with the freshest Jordans and the Jordan gear, which is like, I'm sure it has to be a dream come true to be a Jordan brand athlete. Yes. Your name is Jordan. It's just written in the stars. I feel like it's so written. What is it like to be a Jordan brand athlete? But also what is it like to be a Jordan? Who's a Jordan brand athlete? I think there's it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing to be a part of the, the Jordan brand family, to be honest. Um, it's nothing like I've ever experienced before. Just it's a true family culture. And that's what I love about this brand. Um, mm-hmm. And everyone that has that is a part of the brand is unique in their own way. They have their different styles on the court and off yeah. the court, different personalities. Like we're just really different and unique. But we all have this, you know, like I said, this demeanor about us that, you know, when we step on the court, like, you know, we're a beast. And I mm-hmm. think that's really cool to see uh, within this Jordan brand family. And then being a Jordan within the Jordan brand, I think it's also just unique within itself because, you know, my name is Jordan. People say, people call me Air Jordan. My friends call me Air Jordan with an I. Like, it's just different mm-hmm. um, for me just because my name is Jordan. So it, it also has its own sense of, you know, like, um, sense of pride and, and yeah. sense of, you know, respect within itself. And so um, it's definitely different. Like, it's something that I never would have imagined again. Like, I've always wanted to be a part of the Jordan brand since college. Like, when I was getting ready to go for the draft, I'm like, dang, I want to be sponsored by Jordan so bad. Like, I just kept telling myself that. <laughs> That's so I want to cool. be a part of the Jordan brand so bad. And then um, when Nike came along and then Jordan you know, obviously didn't offer me because they were with Kia Nurse and she was, Kia Nurse was one of the the few. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'll go with Nike. Like, you know, it's still close to Jordan. I still get to wear Jordans, like off the court and stuff. So like, (laughs) I'll I'll go with Nike. And then in the bubble, when my agent was like, hey, um, I got an opportunity for you. Let me know if you want to do this. And she's like, Jordan Brands reached out. They want to take over your car. I said, yes. I was like, absolutely. I said, when I like, um, let me think about it. Yes. I called her back immediately because she left me a voicemail and I called her back immediately. And I was like, absolutely. I was like, there's no question. I don't need to think about it. Let's just do it. And she was like, okay, perfect. Like I've talked to, you know, Jasmine and uh, AD. So it was pretty cool. Like just to see how, you know, that all came full circle. And now I'm here and I love it and I couldn't think to be anywhere else. So that is so cool. And you you would say that you are a sneaker um, connoisseur, if you if you will. So you get this first pair of Jordans mailed to you. They're like, yes, this is your new life. What was that feeling like? You're like, oh, this is I was all like, the hard work was for this. <laughs> To be honest, I was like, do you know, in my mind, I was like, do you know how much money I'm going to save now? I don't have to worry about buying these Jordans because, you know, now in retail, everybody resells them for like ridiculous prices. It's crazy out there. Yeah. So I'm like, oh my God, now I don't have to buy any more Jordans. I am saving so much money. It's, I, that was like the first thought in my mind. But then also it was just like, wow, like just to see 
all the things that I get is the same that what the guys get like every Mm. single month I get a care package like that's something that I didn't know that would you know happen until I got to be a part of the Jordan brand and just seeing how much stuff I was getting like I remember um after season, I was still getting stuff. Like I was getting all these boxes and my mom was going crazy because it was all in her living room and it was piling up and she was getting so mad. She was like, there better be sizes in there for me if you're going to keep getting these boxes into you. And I'm like, mom, relax. I was like, relax. You'll get your stuff, like calm down. And so now I'm just like so overwhelmed to the point where I have to like, sometimes I have to either like give some to my friends or I'm or like to me or, or yeah yeah <laughs> or to you you know <laughs> like and then, oh, I have people, then I have people like I have people like texting me like hey can I get these in the size blah blah, blah. and sometimes I'm like nah I can't do it I don't have that type of pool like I'll lie and say oh I don't have this type of pool but now I'm like outing myself because now when this comes out people are gonna be like oh you lied now I know you have to pull. <laughs> oh yeah we can just bleep and, that part out don't right we? we can bleep this part out and then there's <laughs> and then there's some people that you know have helped me like tremendously that I'm like okay yeah I can get you a, a couple pairs of shoes um but just to to have that experience and just to be like having all this stuff and Jordan brand, like, it's just amazing. Mm. Like I, I love it. So cool. Yeah. Yeah, So I'm, I'm a size, um, like seven and a half. Okay. And men, cause I'm a size size seven. seven. Yes. See, perfect. I'm a size seven in men and eight and a half in women. Yes. So Jasmine, I know you on the call. So if you (laughs) you hear this, yes, Jordan, some Jordans. You know, that's only I, I was great to meet you, but it was really to make this connection. I really had to get a plug on the inside. So I'm so happy of that. We can I can text your mom, you know, if there's some shoes right. just left over. I can swing by. I'm in right. L.A. Don't even worry about it. Right. Don't even worry about it. Now it's to the point. Well, I actually moved to Vegas a couple months ago. So now okay. I have a spot in Vegas. So now I have a room that's specifically for my shoes because I, it's just so overwhelming and I have to figure out how I'm going to like make it really cool with all the Jordans and stuff. Like I'm trying to figure that part out, like how I want to design my shoe room. So I knew once I moved out, I was like, I have to have a shoe room because there's no way that I'm yeah. just going to be piling shoes in my closet <laughs> and just have stacks and boxes of shoes and not know what to do with them. So I'm like, I have to have a shoe room. So now I'm in the process of trying to figure out how I want to create that. Mm-hmm. So if I ever run out of space, I'll be sure to hit you up and be like, hey, I got a couple pairs I can give away. Yes. You need some. I will make so. room. I will make a shoe room. I will like <laughs> build it onto my town home and I will make a shoe room just for the extra leftover shoes that you have. Now that we know we're the same size, this is great right. for me. This is really this is the <laughs> best day of my life. <laughs> also with Jordan brand, which I love is they, you know, support your causes or things that you're passionate Mm -hmm. about outside of the court too and I know that you have like the hashtag we got us challenge and uh, Mm -hmm. supporting black businesses tell us a little more about that and how um how that kind of came about yeah so I got approached by one of my friends his name is Tim Barnes he plays overseas um and he actually approached me with the idea he was like hey um this was during the time of COVID and the George Mm -hmm. Floyd um cases and stuff uh case and so he hit me up and was like hey do you want to be a part of this we got us challenge which is basically you know promoting black businesses or just supporting them whether it be behind closed doors or just putting them on their social media like do you want to be a part of it so I was like yeah for sure like I would love to do that um and so you know we just created videos and we put it out on our on our platform was like if there is any um black owned businesses like to tag them in the video and so you know every week I'll either be you know basically promoting their business or I'll buy some of their products or I'll talk to him behind closed doors of how I could support you know in any um, possible way and so we started to do that and it kind of like took off and so uh for a couple weeks I was like posting black owned businesses and you know Mm -hmm. just sharing a little bit about their background and who were the founders and why they started and, you know, what their business is. 
And, you know, it got a lot of traction um, and people were supporting it. And even to this day, like I'll still go back on my feed and I'll look at a couple of the black owned businesses that were tagged. And, you know, I'll either hit them up on DM, be like, hey, like, how can I support you? How can mm. I purchase this? How can I do that? Um, so it's pretty cool to, to see that, um, especially during that time. It was extremely important to, you know, just be an advocate for black businesses because, yeah. you know, we, they don't get the exposure, um, you know, that they need. And so I wanted to do that any way possible. And so did my friend, um, Tim. So we just created the We Got Us Challenge. And, you know, we're still continuing to do it to this day. Um, so it's been it's been pretty awesome to be a part of that. And, you know, just to, like I said, create opportunities for Black businesses to, you know, share their products and, you know, to get their word out. That's so cool. So, so cool. And I, I, I love that as a challenge and as, um, you know, something to keep amplifying black owned businesses. And I feel like mm -hmm. even with the Jordan brand, as they brought on new um, female athletes and women basketball athletes, it was to amplify voices of female athletes. And so I love that mm -hmm. connection and everything that that is going on there. It's awesome. I'm thank also going to look through those posts and see what black owned businesses I can support. So thank you for that. Yes, there's there's tons on there. So <laughs> that's so cool. So cool. OK, last yeah. thing I'm going to talk to you about. Okay. You have a very special talent. Oh, and you <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. Not only and I'm gonna tell the world because I think you guys need to understand Jordan Canada can't just sing. It's like again, I versus A. She can sing. She can actually <laughs> sing. Like she has a amazing voice. Thank and you. she's like, oh, yeah, just casual. Just let me post this on my Instagram real quick <laughs> as I just blow everyone's minds of how great she can sing. So here's a very important question for you. Most important mm -hmm. question I've asked the whole podcast. What is your favorite Danity Kane song? Danity Kane? Oh, my God. <laughs> um, I actually that's so crazy. I was actually listening to one of their songs like a couple weeks ago. Um <laughs> um key to my heart oh good one that one that one is a sleeper I like that that is a um, good one I can't believe you asked me about that anything like that's <laughs> okay. so crazy I that, saw your that tweet was not even, that didn't even cross my mind <laughs> I saw Danity your tweet Kane. about Danity Kane and day 26 being slept on and I couldn't agree more and the reason yes. I asked this is because my, I think my favorite Danny Kane song is damaged because OK, that's so good. good. One. It's catchy. It's so good. But if Diddy posted right now, he was like, I'm bringing back making the band. It's going to be <laughs> virtual. I'm going to I'm going to make a girl group. You're going to tour <laughs> virtually so you could still do it. Well, not overseas. tour virtually. <laughs> <laughs> would you audition and would what I would audition? your audition song be? Would I audition? I guess for the sake of this podcast, I would say yes. The answer should be now, yes, regardless. What, because I'm very, I'm very, I'm very shy when it comes to singing. Like it took me a lot to post that video. Like I don't really like to, when people ask me to sing on spot, I'm like, oh, no, I'm not going to do it. Like I just, I'm very shy. So like, I just don't really like to do it, but I'm trying, you know, I need to be a little bit more out there. Like I need to share yes. my talent. So I'll do it. So for the sake of the podcast, I'm going to say, yes, I would audition for making the band. If I had to choose a song, that's hard. Cause there's so many songs that I sing. And then it's still like, to the point mm -hmm. where I'm like, I have to sing it. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I would sing this in front of everyone you true, know true 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 um, this is for your audition this is in front of diddy my audition virtually hmm i would probably choose her mm. and the song would be my song oh her my song yeah okay i really like that song that's a good song i love her She's I she's like one of my favorite female artists. Like I love listening so to her. So, so that would definitely be the song that I would choose. OK, I think that's a good one. That is a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. If I'm Diddy, I'm I'm pleased with that. I'm pleased with that. I hope okay. I don't make you walk and go get cheesecake or anything <laughs> like 50 miles away in the cold. But 
I think that that would be good. And then I feel like it's also a trend just on spinsters. The WNBA players I have interviewed do have some musical talent. Like I've interviewed Angel McCautry, who has like a yeah. EP and she like an album. Song. Yeah. 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 I've heard one of her songs. It's uh, good, right? It's like Afro. I can't beat. remember the name. I can't remember the name of the song, but I remember listening to it in the bubble. Yeah. <laughs> I know she I know she could sing. I know yes. Courtney Williams can sing too. I know Cheyenne Ooh. Parker can sing. I'm just throwing out their names. I don't even know if they No, want no, to that's good. Erica names. McCall was on the podcast. She can also sing. She's really good at Okay. Karaoke. Yeah, Erica McCall. Yeah, she was my teammate in the Sparks. I know she could sing. Yes. I don't know anybody else that who if else you could make the, a band podcast. if you can make a band with WNBA players only. Who would you want how, in your band? How many people are in the band, though? Is it like you guys? How many was in Danny King? How many people you just named? Four? Like six? Was it like six? Five, in Danny six? King? I could have swore it was like five or six of them. Maybe. I just want to be Shannon. Yeah, I'm just them. in the back. <laughs> I'm just in the back <laughs> dancing and not singing. You could be the back, the backup, the backup dancer. You yeah. could be our main dancer. Yeah. You, that, I mean, <sighs> I would love that. I mean, I was getting to that when you were going <laughs> to list off people. You, can, like, you could be, be our back. choreographer. You could be our oh, choreographer yes. and our main dance person for sure. So we have to put you in the so band. Excited. I'm so excited. We have to okay. put you in the band. <laughs> and I'm wearing Jordans. But probably the people great. we just named. Yeah, we can wear Jordans. Great. Okay. Nice. I, hey, I would listen to that album and you guys just play it at all WNBA arenas. You perform right. at halftime when you guys play against each other. Oh yeah. I'm your, I'm your tour manager. Also choreographer, <laughs> also dancer. So don't even, don't even worry about a thing, but I, um, right. that was, I just had to get that in there. I'm not going to ask you to sing on the spot. Don't worry. Thank you. But um, everyone, uh, Jordan Canada is a singer and she's going to be on making the band and there's going to be a WNBA girl group. People have told me I should get on the on the, um, the mask singer, Ooh. which I would do because it's mask. So I really don't have to yes. worry about. I mean, I would perform in front of people, but at least I'm like mask. So I really don't have to be that. That would like, be perfect. Yeah. So I could do that. Um <sighs> Do okay, I but don't tell us when you're on it because then we would guess. Well, yeah, we I can't yeah. tell you. Okay. But if you know whoever's watching this, if y'all got connections to the mask singer, <laughs> I could be on the show in the off season. Yes, I like doing it. I out support there. this. Right. Oh, I support this so much. Wow. Well, <laughs> Jordan, this was so much fun. Thank you <laughs> for coming Thank on Spencer. I had a blast. You. <laughs> Thank you. And I got to give a shout out. Make sure to check out Take It From L.A., a four episode series hosted by yours truly that celebrates L.A. basketball culture, everything that it's about, the community. The first episode, which Jordan is in, drops January 26th on at Jumpman23 Instagram and Twitter, as well as the Nike app. And stay tuned on all those platforms for the remaining episodes over the next month. And I'm so excited for people to finally see it. Yes, me too. He will see another side to me that they have not seen. So, yes, you have brought that that out. Just letting you know. Shout (laughs) out to you because you have brought out a version of me that I don't really be putting out like there like that. So now everybody gets to see it. I'm excited for that. You're welcome. That was so fun. Spencers is hosted by me, Jordan Liggins, and Haley O'Shaughnessy. This episode was produced by Isabel Joycelyn, Harry Krinsky, Alex Ward, Ashley Zhao, and me. Our production coordinator is Devin Shepard, and our executive producers are Peter Moses, John Yells, and Haley. Hi, Jordan and Haley. My name is Aaron calling from New Mexico. My favorite rookie, perhaps not favorite, but I think is most fun to follow is Herb Jones. Herb Jones, my guy for the Pelicans. I just think he's awesome for so many reasons, most of which concern the defensive end of the court. I mean, just seeing him work on defense is fantastic. Um, What I like most is the potential for fantasy names that include his name, such as Smokin' Herb, Crumblin' Herb. Uh, you know, things along those lines. So perhaps not the most conventional reasons why he's my favorite, but um, I think he deserves some recognition. All right. Bye.